Hey, CFMA, this is Mary DeVault with the Chicago chapter of CFMA. Today, I'm going to talk to you about accounting for change orders. We're going to start with the first question you're going to need to answer. Do I need to account for this change order as a separate contract? The answer to that depends on whether the change order is separate and distinct deliverable. Not only does it need to be able to be delivered separately, but the customer must derive benefit, independent of your base contract. If both the conditions are met, you will follow the same process I'm going to lay out on your next slide but you will account for the change order as a separate contract. If these conditions are not met, the change order is considered a part of the original contract and the original performance obligation. You will record it and include it with your original contract. Under ASC 606, change orders are accounted for as variable consideration. Our next step will be to determine what value are we gonna to use to account for this change order. As you'll see up in the, up in the left-hand corner of the presentation here, First thing you're gonna ask is, has the change order scope and price been agreed upon with your customer? If so, great, your job is simple. You're gonna increase your contract value for the change order amount. You're going to forecast the estimated cost of this change order. And this is gonna affect your total gross profit on the job. You will recognize based on your percentage of completion calculation, the gross profit to date. If the change order has not been approved. You will need to determine whether recovery is probable. If after reviewing your facts and circumstances, your answer is no, recovery is not probable, then this is gonna be a reduction in your gross profit. However, if it is probable, we have a little more work to do. You're going to need to determine if the approval of the change order is assured beyond a reasonable doubt. If the answer is no, it's not totally assured beyond a reasonable doubt, you're gonna take the lower of cost or anticipated revenue. In the case of cost, that means you're going to recognize zero gross profit. In the case if the anticipated revenue is less than cost, you're in essence recognizing the loss at this point in time. If your answer is yes, approval and receipt of the change order is assured beyond a reasonable doubt, then you'll recognize the value of the change order in your contract value. You'll estimate the cost for this change order and you will pick up the gross profit based on your percent complete. Now, I mentioned earlier facts and circumstances when assessing probability of an amount assured. Let me give you a couple examples. One could be timing. Maybe you've done this kind of work before. Maybe you've done it for this client and you've gotten the change or it's a matter of the paperwork getting processed. So there you go. That number is going to be picked up. Maybe you've had experience like these kind of scopes with other contracts. And so you have some basis for that. At the end of the day, look at your contract, see what it says how things will be handled. I want to leave you with one final thought on change orders. This is an area where the construction financial pre professional can use their expertise to have a positive impact on the company's profit by helping design process and procedures to make sure that you're controlling, documenting, and collecting the amounts for change order work. Remember, if you do the work and you can't recover the amount, it's going to infect, impact what you can afford to buy with the profits. Does your owner want a dinghy or a yacht? Thank you for your time today. I hope you found this helpful.